don't go with the standard like most states tell you a three-day supply don't buy that folks go for at least a two-week supply of everything we're talking about today but until you experience it firsthand you have no idea what you're in for all right so on this video today we're going to get going right now number one is water some way to filter the water some way to purify water all right I would highly suggest for people to invest the 40 or 50 bucks that they cost and it's a bathtub bladder. The bathtub bladder is a really great way to store water prior to the hurricane coming in. You take and you put that in your bathtub, hooks are right up to your faucet, you fill it up and depending on the size of your bathtub, you got a ton of water. Now remember, you need water for quite a few things. Besides drinking, you need water to cook with, clean with, clean yourself with. You also need water to flush your toilet. All right, folks. And I would highly suggest that you do have cases of water, bottled water, if you can find it, because with all the shortages and stuff, that hasn't been in the stores lately. So that could create a problem for a lot of people. Maybe you need to start taking, and if you are able to buy water in gallon jugs, save those jugs once you're done in case you need some type of water and some way to store it you can also go to walmart or any of your favorite you know sporting goods stores or anything else and you can buy like jerry cans and this type of stuff they're plastic you don't have to get the expensive uh, metal ones and this way here you can store water in them they usually range between five to eight gallons you know, that's a lot of water, but you have to make sure that when it comes to water, you're rationing it. Next, number two, canned goods. Always make sure you have plenty of canned goods on hand. Okay, folks, you know, that's everything from canned meats, uh, vegetables, potatoes, uh, fruits, all that kind of stuff you want to make sure that you do have on hand. I would highly suggest on a lot of these items that you want to plan for at least a two week supply at base minimum. Reason being is it takes a while for the help to come in, set up, and start maybe making meals for you, giving you first aid or anything else. So this is something that you're really going to want to pay attention to and you're going to want to implement. Number three is dry goods, dry goods of all kinds. You know, your rice, your flour, sugar, uh, yeast, all this type of stuff. Make sure that you have plenty of it. Cereal and everything depends on your family, depends on if it's just you, depends on if you have kids, is what you're going to put up for dry goods. All right. Number four, a way to cook. All right. You have to have some way to cook in case they turn off the power. If they turn off the natural gas, which could be possible, you got to have something to fall back on. That's where your Coleman stoves and all those different type of things come in handy. This way here, you have some way to cook. You have to make sure that you can boil your water to sanitize the water, to clear it from any bacteria, anything else, especially if you don't have a filtration system that is helping you do that. Number five, a way to generate power. You want to make sure you're getting either a generator, battery banks, and everything else. The biggest thing is you got to make sure that you have a generator because if the power goes out, you have all your food in your refrigerator or your freezers or whatever. You got to make sure that you have power to run those things. Now, remember, you don't have to run them 24 seven. If you stay out of those and you have coolers or something that you can put the stuff you use the most constantly all day long instead of open the refrigerator or freezer, it's going to stay cold in there. But you can also turn around and this way here you have a generator to power those certain things all right number six extra gas and extra gas cans so you want to make sure that you have extra gas for your vehicles extra gas cans so that you can fill those up prior to having a hurricane when the hurricane's gone and if everything goes back to normal you just can take and dump that gas right back into your car you don't have it's not going to be wasted you're just going to put it back in your car. When you need gas in your car, just pull it in there. But you're also going to make sure that you have extra propane or kerosene or you want to make sure that you have uh, butane. Whatever kind of stoves and stuff you're using, you got to have extra gas for those also. Number seven, having cash on hand. All right. In a hurricane situation, and I have been there, done that, and I know all about that. 
if a hurricane is going to hit and after the storm you may have some small stores open up and everything else but they may only be on cash only because there is no power so making sure that you have plenty of cash on hand before the storm hits could be a lifesaver number eight emergency communication and radios you have to have some way to get some information so you can get a hand crank radio a battery powered radio a solar powered radio anything like that if somebody is going to be going out and doing stuff or whatever or leaving uh, if you want you may want to make sure that you have maybe a two-way radios this way you still can communicate because if the cell towers and everything are down your cell phone is basically useless remember that all right number nine tarps now with your tarps you want to make sure that you're getting either large tarps or small tarps you got to have them for different things the large tarps would be in case you get a hole in the roof your small tarps would be for like a window a door or something like that that you can cover and try to keep things out if you know what i'm saying all right number 10 first aid kits you want to make sure that you have plenty of first aid kits and backup supplies for those kits that is very very crucial um, even if you just have a basic kit like you can buy at Walmart or off Amazon or something like that you know a $20 $30 kit it's better than nothing you can build your own I've done first aid kits on this channel and this way here you have more supplies in case of a bad accident happening you just don't know so if people can't get to you you got to be able to try to do something in the meantime you understood so first aid kits is very very important and make sure that you do have replacement products for those first aid kits in case you have to use them number 11 tools tools you need tools of all different types of tools you need tools to turn off your water supply your gas supply you also want to make sure that you do have tools in case you have to um, hang plywood if you have plywood and a window blows out you got to screw it up somewhere or something you got to have tools for that you need hammer and nails and all that kind of stuff in case you got to put tarps up those type of tools are going to come in very very handy number 12 flashlights lanterns candles and all that kind of stuff is something that you want to make sure that you do have plenty of and you got to make sure that you have batteries and everything else to go with those type of products and as a bonus one Having solar panels to charge your battery banks and those type of things would also be another addition that would go with battery banks, all right? Battery banks and solar panels are hand in hand. They go together and this way here, you always have power because you can put it out in the sun, charge them up, and then you can charge things around your house or depending on if you buy a nice battery bank, you can run things around your house. A fan may be even kind of nice, maybe some lights at nighttime, you know, those type of things. You can get larger ones where you can run more, but they do cost more. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope that everybody stays prepped and stays ready. And remember one thing, folks. None of this stuff goes to waste. Because basically, when you're prepping for a hurricane, and if you don't use your preps, those preps can be just rolled in, and you just become a prepper. Get me? So until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.